Now that we have Nutanix Community Edition installed, how do we deploy workloads to it? Hi, I'm Laura Giordana, Technical Marketing at Nutanix. And in our last video, we went through the installation of Nutanix Community Edition 2.1. In this video, I'll walk you through a deeper dive of the interface and how we can deploy our first workload. Let's take a look. So when we last left off, we had logged into the interface after installing Nutanix Community Edition on our NUC. And so we saw we're running AHV uh, with one host, one block. We're running AOS 6.8.1. So let's take a little deeper look at the interface. So when logging in, you can see kind of an overall view of the status of your cluster, compute and storage, the health of the cluster, uh, any alerts and data resiliency status. Uh, so you can see that the data resiliency status is showing critical, and this is because we're only running on one node, so this is expected. Um, if we drill into the health page, uh, we can see that we have some failed health checks. These are also tied to alerts. Um, and so we can see that the kind of two places that we're failing uh, is based on um, using the default password for our host as well as our, our CVM. And so that's something we could easily fix uh, if we wanted to. And we can also see the alerts here and these alerts can be set up to be emailed or if you're using something like an SNMP monitoring tool um, that you can send these alerts to and it needs a MIB for defining uh, the objects. You know, we have a Nutanix specific MIB as well. And there's many other ways to ex export alerts and get notifications of the alerts inside the cluster. So coming over to our VMs view, so we just have our controller VM here that was deployed as part of the installation process that's managing our storage. And so looking at the storage, we can see we have um, some storage containers defined out of the box. And we have a single storage pool that's encompassing uh, all of the disks in the cluster, which in our case is just uh, two disks. And if you had a multiple node cluster, your storage pool would encompass all of the disks across those nodes. And then the storage containers are essentially logical policies on top of this storage pool. And so there's no need for things like traditional RAID and LUN masking and whatnot. So I'm gonna just go ahead and leave the defaults here. We don't need to create any new storage at this point. We can just start using that storage right away um, for our VMs. So the first thing we need to do is create a virtual network for our VMs. So I'm going to come in here to the VMs view and click on network config, um, where I'm going to define a subnet, which is essentially the VLAN configuration. Uh, and I could optionally have um, AHV manage the IP address assignments, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that to my own network. So next we're gonna go ahead and use the um, image service of AOS to uh, upload a disk image for our VM to use. So the Image service is a very easy to use service for uploading images either locally from your local workstation or via a URL. So in this case, I'm gonna be using the Ubuntu Cloud image from the Ubuntu website. So I can just paste that in the URL there. And once it kicks off, we can view the progress in the tasks view. So once our image has been successfully downloaded to the cluster, we can go now and create the VM um, using this disk image. Um, we can also see that there's some storage controller activity happening now on our cluster. Um, so now going into the VM view, um, I'll click on create VM and I'm going to go ahead and just call this uh, my Ubuntu VM. I'm going to give it two cores and two gigabytes of memory. Um, we'll add the disk. So I'm going to clone from the image service that Ubuntu cloud image um, that I just uploaded. And then I'm gonna also add a second disk, uh, carve that out on the storage container, uh, the default storage container as a data disk. We'll add it to our virtual uh, default network. And then I'm going to put in a custom cloud init script so I can configure some things within this cloud image such as the SSH key and a username and password. So um, I can just paste that in there and we'll go ahead and save that. And then our VM will get created and once it's created, we can go ahead and power it on. It might take one to two minutes to get up and running. And once it's up and running, um, we can see that my local DHCP server has given it an IP address, so I could SSH to it now, or since I've configured um, the username and password in my cloud init script, I can go ahead and launch the console directly from 
our user interface and log in with um, the username and password that I specified and start using my Ubuntu VM. So I hope that helps you get started with some of the operations that you can do with your Nutanix Community Edition cluster. If you have any questions or need help, head on over to the Nutanix Next community forums at next.nutanix.com. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.